Right. Uh, today we will discuss uh, how to adjust value added tax in accounting uh, in advanced level in Sri Lanka. Right. Value added tax. Right. Uh, then uh, what do you mean by value added tax? Value added tax means tax on added value. Based on the added value to the economy, you need to pay value added tax. You need to pay VAT for the Sri Lankan government, for the tax department, for the Ilan owner departments in Sri Lanka. I mean, then for the added value, uh, you need to pay tax. Value added tax. Then the main organization, the responsible organization in Sri Lanka to collect value added taxes, Department of Inland Revenue. Department of Inland Revenue is the responsible organization in Sri Lanka to collect value added tax. Right. Current applicable value added tax rate is 8%. 8%. Earlier, uh, tax rate was 15%, but now the tax rate is 8%. Right. Uh, through this video, try to get the logical understanding regarding the value added tax. This knowledge will be important for the your higher studies as well. If you are doing degree, uh, if you are doing chartered, SIMA, ACCA, the knowledge you gathered from the value added tax is very important. It's very important. Right. We will go to the lesson. Let's say business organization A. Let's say business organization A manufactured new product. Manufactured new product. Business organization A collected natural resources from the environment. Using the collected natural resources, the business manufactured 1,000 worth of product. Newly added value to the economy is 1,000. 1,000. Then for this added value, for this 1,000, company A, business A, has to pay 8% value added tax to the Department of Illinois. Let's say this IRD, IRD, Department of Illinois, IRD, the short form is IRD. Right. Then for the added value to the economy, business A has to pay 8%. They want to pay 8% to the Department of IRD. 1000 into 8% means 80. Business A pay 80 to the Department of Inland Revenue. Right. Let's say the business A sold this product to company B for 1000. For 1000, company B purchased this product. And company B converted this product into 4000 worth of product. 4000 worth of product. Then total added value to the economy, how much? 3,000. For this 3,000, company B need to pay value added tax for the IRB. Right. 3,000 into 8%. 3,000 into 8%, 240. Business B pay 240 for the Department of Illinois. And then let's say company B sold this product to company C, business C. Right, business C purchases this product from company B. Company B, and then company C converted this product into a 9,000 worth of product. 9,000 worth of product. And then total added value to the economy, how much? 5,000. And for this 5,000, company C has to pay. 8% back. 8% back. How much? How much? 400. Company C pay 400 to the Department of Finland. And then Company C sell this product to custom. For the end custom. Right. This is the basic idea of value added tax. Department of Illa Revenue collected collected total value added tax from each company 80 
to 40 and 400. Total collected amount 700. 700. If we look at total added value to the economy, the total added value to the economy, 9,000 into 8 percent. How much? 710. Yes. Based on the added value, the Department of Revenue has collected 710. Total added value to the economy, how much? 9,000. For that 9,000, Illinois Department should collect 720. Yeah. Should collect they have collected 720. Then no. Then So this is the basic idea of value added tax. Based on the added value, you need to pay taxes to the government. Based on the added value, you need to pay taxes to the government. This is a basic idea. Basic idea. Now we will look at how to pass double entries, how to pass double entries by each business organization for value added tax. Right. Then other thing is value added tax is an indirect tax. Indirect tax. Indirect tax means uh, in tax, we have two types of taxes based on transferability. Direct tax and Indirect tax, income tax, personal income tax, corporate income tax, NBT, some direct taxes. Direct tax. right. Indirect tax means some taxes like value added tax, indirect tax. The meaning of indirect tax is this tax can be transferred to another person. To another customer, the business can transfer value added tax. So, value added tax categorized under indirect taxes. Indirect taxes. And one of the major uh, revenue source of Sri Lankan government is value added tax. Right. Right. Then, value added tax is tax that can be transferred to another person. Another thing is here, the company A. Their revenue is, their income is 1,000. But from this 1,000, they will have to pay 8% to the government. But what is indirect tax? Then business A can transfer their tax liability to another customer. And based on the added value, Company B has to pay value added tax to the government 240. But if they paid using their profit, here yeah, their profit is 3000. If they paid using their profit, their profit will be reduced. Therefore, company B doesn't like to pay using their profit this value added tax to the government. They transfer their liability to customer C, business C. Business C also doesn't like to pay this 400 using their profit. So they transfer this liability to final customer. Final customer. Right. So that is the meaning of period of tax. We can transfer. We can transfer this, their liability. Company A liability can transfer to B. B uh, B's liability can transfer to C. Company C liability can transfer to customer. Now we will look at how to how to pass double entries by each business organization. How to pass double entries by each business organization. Right. Right. Now we will prepare ledger accounts of each business organization. And we will look at how to pass double entries by each business organization for value tax. Right. Business A. Business A cash book. Cash book. Business A sold 1000 product to business B. 1000 product to business B. And when they're selling this 1000 product to business B, they add 8% to the sales figure. 
8 percent to be sales figure. Then amount is how much? 80 rupees. Total amount 1080. Total amount 1080. Company A issue value tax invoice. What invoice? What invoice to company B? In that what invoice? We can clearly identify sale value 1000, value added tax 80, short amount 1080. Company B knows that they have collected 80 rupees from us. Okay, I tell them. So 1000 sales value 80, value added tax 1080, total amount collected by the company A 1080. Right, now we will look at how to pass double entry by company A. Right. 1000, we will pass our entry separate. Yeah, right. 1000 sales value, then cash book debit 1000 sales and sales account, <coughs> sales account credit 1000 cash. Company A collected 1000 from company B. Not only that, they collected another 80 rupees from company B. How to pass double entry for this 80? Right. Cash book debit 80, web payable account, and then web payable account, credit, web payable account, web payable account, credit 80, cash. Cash book debit 80, web payable account, credit. Right. After collecting this 80 rupees by company A from company B, this amount this amount should be paid to the Department of Eleven. Company A cannot retain this. Company A cannot retain this eight rupees. This eight rupees belongs to government. One of the government property. One of the government property. So company A pay this eight rupees to the Department of Eleven. Right. How to pay? Uh, their cash balance rupees. Cash outflowing, therefore, cash account credit, we have payable account, and then we have payable account to be eight rupees cash. Company A pay this eight rupees to government. Government. Department of Eleven will receive eight rupees from company A. Company A. Right. Profit how much? In company A, our profit is 1000. They don't have purchases, they extracted natural resources, therefore their income, their profit is one dollars. No impact to profit. They collected this aid from next customer and pay to the government. No impact to their profit is one No issue. Right. Now we will look at how to pass double entries by company B. Company B, right. Company B received invoice from company A. Company A, right. They prepare, company B prepare accounts like this. Cash book, cash. Company A, company B paid 1,000 to company A to purchase product, to purchase product. So cash book credit 1,000 and then purchase account, purchase account debit 1,000. Purchase account debit 1,000. Purchase account debit 1,000. Here cash. Not only that, company B paid 80 to the company A. So for that 80, the double entries, cash book credit 80, that payable account, and then that payable account, that payable account, that payable account, debit 80. Thanks. Company B paid 80 rupees to company B, company A, company A. Five. Company B paid this 1000, uh, paid this 80 rupees because of their 1000, in, their input is 1000. Their input is 1000. For 1000 input, they paid 80 rupees back. Therefore, this 80 rupees is called input back. Input back. This has paid this 80 rupees because of input. Therefore, this A rupees is called input value. Input value. Right. 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 
And then uh, according to previous example, uh, business B sold, converted this 1,000 product into 4,000 product, 4,000 product, 4,000 product. And sold this product to company C. Sold this product, 4,000 worth of product, sold to company C, right? When they sell in this 4,000 product to company C, they add 8% back. They add 8%. They add 8% back for this 4,000. For this 4,000. Then 4,000 into 8%, how much? 4,000 into 8%. 4,000 into 8%. Amount is how much? Amount is 310. Company B doesn't like to pay valuable tax using their profit. Therefore, with sales, they transfer uh, their valuable tax to company C. Company C. And they prepare the VAT invoice. In that VAT invoice, company C can clearly see they have a company B has collected 324 valuable tax. Total amount payable is 4,320. Right. right. Then company B collected total 4,320 from company C. Out of 4,320, 4,000 for sales. 4,000 for sales. So cash book debit 4,000, sales and sales account, sales account, credit 4,000, cash. Cash book debit. Sales account credit, sales account credit. Not only that, they collect 320 from company C. Company C. How to pass double for that company for 320? Cash book debit 320, when you have tax and what account credit 320. Nice. Company B collected 320 from company B. So from company C. From company C. Right. right. Now we will look at periodic tax, periodic payable account. Right. Already paid the amount to company A, 80. Collected the amount from company C, 320. Collected the amount from company C, 320. Right. And then company B can deduct 80 from total collected amount and balance amount need to be paid for the department of eleven. This AD already paid to company A, A to RB. So this AD, no need to pay again. But this output back, that collected on sales, sales is output, that collected on sales, output back, we need to pay. But deducting this AD rupees, then 320 minus, 320 minus eight rupees is 240. The balance 240, Paid in cash to the department of eleven. But payable account debit 240, cash book credit 200. Well, that payable account. Cash book credit, that payable account debit. Company B paid this 240 to the department of eleven. Department of eleven. Right. Okay, okay then. Anyway, right. Now we will move into business C. How to pass double entries by business C? Ah, Lamai. Another thing is here in business B, profit is how much? Sales 4,000, income 4,000, purchases 1,000, profit is 3,000. Profit 3,000 because of this VAT, no impact to profit. No impact to profit. Right. right. Now we will look at how to pass double entries by company C. Company C. Right. Company C purchase product from company B. B. So how to pass the volume by company C? Right. Cash paid 4,000. So cash book credit 4,000. Purchases and purchase account debit. Purchase account debit 4,000. Cash. Cash. Company C paid 4,000 to company. B for purchases. For purchases. And then 
another 320 pay to company B, another 320. So then cash book credit 320 to that payable account and then and then that payable account debit. That payable account debit 320 cash. 320. Company C pay 322. Company B cash book credit that payable account debit. Right. And then earlier we discussed. Company C converted this 4,000 worth of product for 9,000 product. 9,000 product. Using this 4,000 product, they prepared 9,000 worth of product. And then, when selling this 9,000 worth of product to customer, company C had 8% more. They had 8% more. Then, for the 9,000, for the 9,000, 720. 720. They had 7,720 for the 9,000. Right. When Mr. C sell this product to customer, customer will sell this product for 9,720. But out of 9,720, 9,000 for sales, 720 for credit cards. Right. Now we will look at how to pass double entries by company C. Company C collected 9,000 for sales. Cash book debit, 9,000. Sales account, credit 9,000. Credit 9,000, cash. cash. Cash book debit, sales account credit. But only that, they collected 720 from company, from customer, from customer. Cash book debit, 720. But payable account, but payable account credit 720. Right here, look at the web payable account now. Output web 720, input web 320. This input web already paid to the government. Already paid to the government. This T20 paid by company C to company B. Company B. Okay, so company C think that company B may have paid this amount to Department of 11. Right, right. Collected amount 720. Then out of this collected amount, you need to deduct already paid amount, already paid amount. Then 720 minus 320 means 400. 400 pounds. Out of this amount, 400. Unpaid amount to the government, you need to pay. Company C has to pay. So, the payable account debit 400, cash, cash book credit 400, but payable account, but payable account. Cash book credit, but payable account debit. Okay, and by passing this double entry, company C pay this 400 to the Department of Milan, Department of Milan. Right. Then here, uh, look at the uh, Look at the uh, profit of the business. Total sales nine thousand. Purchases four thousand. Profit is five thousand. Profit is five thousand. Profit is five thousand. Here you can see no impact to profit. Although the business pay very very tax to the government, that will not impact to the Profit of the business. Profit is same. 9,000 minus 4,000, 5,000. Profit is 5,000. Right, neither. Right. Anyway, government received, government received, government received 720, 720, 720 value added tax for the total added value to the economy. Here, Total added value to the economy, how much? 9,000. For that 9,000, government received 720. 720. 720. Okay, for that added value, each company paid taxes to the government. But, but company A transferred their liability to company B. Company B transferred their liability to company C. 
for this ultimate payment borne by whom? Customer. Customer has to pay up this 720 total value of the tax. Customer has to pay 9,720. They cannot transfer this 720 to anyone else. They will have to bear 720. If government did not impose, did not impose value added tax, customer can purchase this product for 9,000. But because of this 8% value added tax, what will happen? Uh, uh, price of the product increased by, what happened? Price of the product increased by 720. It means if government increase the value of the tax, what will happen? Price will increase. If government decrease product, if, uh, if government decrease the value of the tax, what will happen? Price of the product will decrease. That is the impact of value of the tax to the economy, to the price level of the economy. If government imposing more and more taxes, what will happen? Will happen price level of the economy will increase. Price level of Price level of the economy will increase. So, this is the basic idea of value added tax. Based on the value added, added value, business has to pay taxes. In the earlier example, we discussed how to pay taxes using the value added tax. In this example, we discussed how to pay, how to record value added tax by each business organization. Another thing is here, here we discussed. Business organization registered for that. Registered for that. Registered for that. Company A registered for that. Therefore, they can collect that from company B. Company B registered for that. Therefore, they can collect taxes from value tax from company C. Company C registered for that. Therefore, they can collect that from customer. If one business organization does not register for value added tax. They cannot collect taxes, but they can pay taxes, but they cannot collect taxes. They can collect, they cannot collect taxes if not registered for that. Right. So in the first video, we discussed how to pass double entries by business organization registered for that. And we discussed the logical understanding of value added tax. In the next video, we will discuss how to pass double entries by business organization not for registered for that. In the next video, we'll discuss if business B not registered for that, what will happen to uh, what will happen to their profit? What will happen to business B? Business B's profit, we will discuss. And if business B not registered for that, we will discuss what's the impact to tax revenue of Department of Illinois. We will discuss. We will discuss in the next video. Right. Read this, uh, watch this video again and again, and then try to get the logical understanding. This is the logical understanding of value tax. This knowledge is very important for your higher studies as well. Therefore, please share this video to your friends. And if you have time, uh, look at the video and get the idea how to teach this concept to anyone else. Any students, without hard effort, you can get a pass. Teaching is the best method. Watch this video, get the idea, and, and try to teach this concept to anyone else when you are in school. That's the best method to learn. Okay, right. Then uh, we will stop. Uh, this discussion. From next video, we will discuss how to pass our entries by business organization knowledge. Right. Thank you for the watching this video.